Let us all please rise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. Let us pray. Most merciful God, as the people of Jerusalem with palms in their hands gathered to greet your dearly beloved Son when he came into his holy city, grant that we may ever hail him as our King, and when he comes again, may go forth to meet him with trusting and steadfast hearts, and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. The next day, the news that Jesus was on the way to Jerusalem swept through the city. A large crowd of Passover visitors took palm branches and went down the road to meet him. They shouted, praise God, blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord, hail to the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and rode on it, fulfilling the prophecy that said, don't be afraid, people of Jerusalem, look, your king is coming, riding on a donkey's colt. His disciples didn't understand at the time that this was a fulfillment of prophecy, but after Jesus entered his glory, they remembered what had happened and realized that these things had been written about him. Many in the crowd had seen Jesus call Lazarus from the tomb, rising him, raising him from the dead, and they were telling others about it. That was the reason why so many went out to meet him, because they had heard about this miraculous sign. Then the Pharisees said to each other, there's nothing we can do. Look, everyone has gone after him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us go forth in peace, in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in our eyes. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be made partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, good morning and welcome, everyone. With uh, Palm Sunday, we do the beginning of our service just a little bit differently. So uh, you get the welcome and announcements at this point. Uh, please remember to fill out one of the Welcome to St. Mark cards. Put that in the offering plate when we get to that point uh, in the service. Uh, special announcements. Um, this is the beginning of Holy Week. So this coming week, we have our Monday, Thursday service at 7 o'clock and Good Friday at 1 and 7. Uh, there's no service on Saturday. Um, and then Sunday morning, uh, Easter, our sunrise service will be at 6.30 this year instead of 7 o'clock, uh, just in case anybody wonders why. A little bit later in the year, sunrise is a little earlier, so trying to match the, uh, the clock that God put in the sky for us. So uh, sunrise service at 6.30 and then our other service at 10.30. There will be an Easter breakfast and that's just gonna begin uh, whatever time we get done with the first service, it'll begin. I know it's published at 8.15, but odds are we'll uh, be starting that just a little bit earlier. Um, I believe that's all the special announcements I need to make uh, for today. Most of it just has to do with uh, worship service uh, schedule. Let us continue with our readings. Good morning. The Old Testament reading is from the 32nd chapter of Deuteronomy. Indeed, the Lord will give justice to his people, and he will change his mind about his servants when he sees their strength is gone and no one is left, slave or free. Then he will ask, where are their gods? 
the rocks they fled to for refuge. Where are those gods who ate the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their offerings? Let those gods arise and help you. Let them provide you with shelter. Look now, I myself am he. There is no other God but me. I am the one who kills and gives life. I am the one who wounds and heals. No one can be rescued from my powerful hand. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from Philippians chapter 2. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all names, that in the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Greeks who had come to Jerusalem for the Passover celebration paid a visit to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee. They said, Sir, we want to meet Jesus. Philip told Andrew about it, and they went together to ask Jesus. Jesus replied, Now the time has come for the Son of Man to enter into his glory. I tell you the truth. Unless a kernel of wheat is planted in the soil and dies, it remains alone. But its death will produce many new kernels, a plentiful harvest of new lives. Those who love their life in this world will lose it. Those who care nothing for their life in this world will keep it for eternity. Anyone who wants to serve me must follow me, because my servants must be where I am. And the Father will honor anyone who serves me. Now my soul is deeply troubled. Should I pray, Father, save me from this hour? But this is the very reason I came. Father, bring glory to your name. Then a voice spoke from heaven saying, I have already brought glory to my name and I will do so again. When the crowd heard the voice, some thought it was thunder, while others declared an angel had spoken to him. Then Jesus told them, The voice was for your benefit, not mine. The time for judging this world has come when Satan, the ruler of this world, will be cast out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this to indicate how he was going to die. The crowd responded, We understood from Scripture that the Messiah would live forever. How can you say the Son of Man will die? Just who is this son of man anyway? Jesus replied, My light will shine for you just a little longer. Walk in the light while you can, so the darkness will not overtake you. Those who walk in the darkness cannot see where they are going. Put your trust in the light while there is still time. Then you will become children of the light. After saying these things, Jesus went away and was hidden from them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Be seated, please, and I invite the children to come forward for the children's message. Good morning and welcome, everyone. Did you guys all have fun over at the Easter egg hunt? Sure, sure, Uh, all right. Well, that wasn't real enthusiastic. Who would like to wear a crown today? You want to? All right, come on up here, Kurt. All right, well, it's a little bent, but so we, we got a little bit of a bent. Anyway, never mind. Uh, I need somebody else that's willing to wear this for me. You want to? All right, come on up. All right, so we got to put it like this, and uh, I, I think it'll kind of, 
where we got we to do a little tuck here. Otherwise, we can't see. Oh, oh, I put it on backwards. That's why. Oh. Pastor's got to learn how this stuff works, right? Okay. Now, I want one of you here on this side. Come here, Kurt. And I want you over here. Now, I need you all to tell me which one is the king. Meredith. Is Kurt the king or is Meredith the king? Everybody's confused. You think this is a trick, don't you? <laughs> is, whoop. Let's see. How many think Kurt is the king? All right. Because he's wearing the crown. All right. And how many think that Meredith is the king? And how many of you don't want to try to vote? <laughs> yes. 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 Yeah, see. That's okay. Shall we call you a king S then? Queen. queen. There we go. Queen. You're the queen. All right. It's a simple point that we're trying to make. Usually, we think somebody in, that's a king is going to dress a certain way. Right? If you look at the queen of England, it's the only queen I know, you expect her to dress and behave a certain way. You guys agree with me on that? All right. So, Jesus goes before Pontius Pilate, and uh, is he wearing a crown like this? No, he's not. Oh. So Pontius Pilate's a little confused. Jesus looks more like this, right? Just kind of ordinary. Are you ordinary? You're not ordinary? He's weird. Oh, <laughs> I, I, I'm afraid to know what you said, Harrison. He's weird. No, I am not repeating that. <laughs> She's just dressed normal, right? Okay. Pontius Pilate's confused. How can somebody that looks like this be king? Hmm. Well, thank you for playing along. We'll, we'll take your, your stuff here. Yeah, I messed your hair all up now. Sorry about that. You can go, go and be seated again. But we know that Jesus, even though he didn't look like a king, he was a king. This is a different kind of king. Spiritual king. He's the king that came from heaven for us. He came to do something that normal earthly kings that seek power and glory could not do. He was the one that needed to go to the cross to die for our sins. Different kind of king that was humble and was willing to serve. And that's what brings us the forgiveness of our sins and our salvation. That's a wonderful thing. It's not about what he looked like, but rather what he did for us. So, I've got a little treat for all of you. Okay. Now, I'm going to just assume you didn't get enough candy at the Easter egg hunt. You didn't get any candy, and uh, le let's put it this way. If I don't have enough, I know where there is more. We just might have to wait till after, after church. And I bet your mom knows where the extra is. That's fine. You know where the extra is? Let's fold our hands. Let's bow our heads. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we celebrate today the entrance of Jesus into Jerusalem as he entered to do that most important thing for us, to go to the cross to die for our sins, but most gloriously that he was resurrected again to give us new life. We ask you to lead us and guide us each day of our lives by the light of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate the entrance of Jesus into Jerusalem, and we call it Palm Sunday for a very simple reason, because people were waving palm branches in celebration, giving praise to God as they declared Jesus to be the King of Israel. That, that's it. Big fancy reason, right? Jesus was definitely popular at his time, with a very large following. Now, in our world today, Jesus would maybe have a large number of Facebook friends. You know, you could have a little competition, see who has the most Facebook friends. You know, that used to kind of be a thing uh, a number of years ago. People would compete for that. Wasn't too long ago, I had somebody ask me, so how many people do you have uh, Facebook friends? I said, I don't know. How do I even look? You know, not concerned about that type of thing. Maybe it would be the number of Twitter followers or Instagram followers. But you know, that type of stuff is very fleeting. There's a reason for that. Popularity, by its very nature, is fleeting because people change their opinions and their allegiances very quickly. They like you one day and the next day they don't. This is one of those places in the Bible that teaches us not to base our understanding or view of success upon popularity numbers. The number of people that follow you is not what determines success in God's eyes. Jesus had a large number of people following him at this point in time. And he was a different kind of king. As I described Jesus here a little bit, you'd go, well, yeah, it kind of makes sense that a lot of people would be following him this way. He was a very humble man. He rode into Jerusalem on a young donkey as part of the display of his humility. He didn't come with power and might, and he wasn't forcing people to do what he wanted them to do. But rather, he simply used his words to convince people that this is the right thing to do. Jesus was concerned about the everyday, hardworking person. He was willing to get his hands dirty to build things, to work with people, to spend time with those that were, well, looked down upon by others. He visited people in their homes and he ate dinners with them, even if they were ones that people didn't think were very good people. He had compassion on the sick. He took care of the disabled. He encouraged people to care for the orphans and the widows. He was concerned about those that lacked the ability to be what others would consider a success in life. He was kind of that, that guy that was always for, well, the underdog, the one that had the challenge in life. Jesus was faithful and obedient to the word of God. He de demonstrated an understanding that was beyond the religious leaders. And his teaching ability was far beyond what anybody had ever seen or heard. He could explain things that, well, was just confusing when other people tried to explain them. One of the passages uh, about Jesus that I find most profound, when somebody was, well, being judgmental and arrogant is the term that I use, he simply knelt and drew in the sand, and that simple action silenced them. He had that kind of power. You might say he practiced what he preached. Jesus had amazing powers to accomplish whatever he said. He commanded the winds and the waves, and he multiplied the loaves of bread and the fish to feed thousands. He gave sight to the blind and healed the leper, made the lame walk, cast out evil spirits, and he even raised the dead. We have that in one of our readings today. And when he raised Lazarus from the dead, that really got people's attention. And lots, many more thousands flocked to him. No wonder people loved him. 
Jesus stood for what was good and right and healthy and holy. And we join giving praise to God. We join in that celebration, giving praise to God as he comes, Jesus comes in the name of the Lord, as he is the King of kings and he is the Lord of lords. I want to take our attention for a moment back to that subject of popularity that I started with. From a popularity standpoint, Jesus was very successful. However, at this point in the story, from the perspective of God the Father and, and Jesus himself, in his own eyes, he was not a success. Imagine, if you have a business, and your business is so busy that you can't keep up, and you're working 24 hours a day, and you're hiring people all over the place, would you not consider yourself a success? Hmm. Well, it depends on what your definition of success is. And sometimes we get confused on what is a success. And sometimes that then impacts the way we view ourselves and the way we view other people. Why would I be saying Jesus at this point was not a success, having thousands upon thousands of people following him? Popularity was not his goal. That was not the end. Jesus had a mission to accomplish. And the mission was to go and to carry out the plan of salvation. To complete it, he needed to go to the cross to pay for the sin of the world. It was in this manner that he was going to actually accomplish his purpose of forgiving our sins. And it would be declared acceptable through the glorious resurrection that we celebrate next Sunday with Easter. There is where it is determined he was successful. Mm. See, popularity wasn't the goal. It was just a nice step along the way. Jesus lost during Holy Week all of his popularity. Everybody turned away. Everybody walked away from him. And, but he was faithful even unto death. And he is now exalted and he is our living king. You see, sometimes being good and faithful can be a challenge. Being a good and faithful parent or sibling or worker or neighbor, sometimes it brings great popularity. I want to share with you just a little story from when my, um, when my sons were teenagers. It was common that uh, our house was a, considered a safe house, and the kids could come and be there on Friday nights. We kind of let that be known. Uh, rather than having them running all over the place, bring all of their friends over. So on Saturday morning... You never quite knew how many kids were still left over. We, we had a simple rule. They were welcome to spend the night as long as they had their parents' permission and they had to call home before they spent the night. So you'd wake up on Saturday morning, you didn't know how many bodies you were going to be walking over to get to the kitchen. Now you might think, we had the popular house. Not really. I wouldn't say it that way. Because sometimes we weren't real popular. The kids may do something that was against the house rules. We'd call them on account or call them to account of that. We'd have to have a little sit down and say, look, this is not acceptable. Sometimes when you do that, it brings criticism and ridicule and attack there was a time or two I had parents come over to the house and say, how could you do that? Well, we need to have a little talk. Sometimes you feel like you're doing the right thing, but then you are unjustly criticized. You ever been there? 
I've been there a few times. I want to remind you this. Jesus understands when you go through such an experience. And Jesus promises to be the Lord and King who is going to be with you always. And he invites you to come and to bring whatever burden you have on your heart and bring it to him. He has words of forgiveness and healing and wisdom and strength. And Jesus has people with faith in him to provide you with support. Now, going back to that story, there was a time or two that I called a kid to account inappropriately, and a parent had to straighten me out. You know, we're all sinful, right? We all do things that we shouldn't, but we have a God that loves us through Jesus Christ. Jesus promises to send his Holy Spirit and angels and archangels to work in ways that you may not easily perceive, but they are surrounding you and they are supporting you. Today, we give praise to God that Jesus entered Jerusalem to faithfully carry out the plan of salvation, but we also give praise to God that Jesus has entered our hearts and our lives to be our king, the king from heaven. He is faithful and he completes his work even when we may not fully understand all the circumstances of our life. So we trust in Jesus, that he will shine his light, the light of his word into our lives to shine a path for us to follow, especially when we have those situations that are, well, less than clear. He is the King of kings and he is the Lord of lords. Let us give praise and glory to him. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us rise and we'll confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Be seated, please. Now, I imagine all of you noticed we have uh, some beautiful quilts up here. Uh, there's an announcement on the back of the bulletin that gives you a little bit more detail about it, Lutheran World Relief Quilts. Uh, we have a, a number of ladies that get together on Thursdays uh, to work at putting these together. Uh, I believe that there's some additional people that work from their homes and provides materials and so forth. Uh, they made 75 of these quilts this year. Uh, Ten of them were sold to raise money to be able to buy additional material. Uh, 65 of them are being sent uh, to Lutheran World Relief, who will send them overseas uh, to a variety of countries where people will receive them. So we would like to bless these into the Lord's uh, care. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for the time, talent, and treasure of all of those who contributed to the assembly of these quilts. We thank you for the prayers that have been put in and the great care that has been bestowed as they kept in mind the recipients, those who are struggling in life, and they need a reminder that there is indeed a God who loves them and cares for them. Wherever these quilts may journey, Lord, we ask you to pave the way and open hearts and minds for people to recognize you are a God of love that surrounds them with care and compassion and warmth. Let us pray. 
O oh God, in your mercy, wash away our sins. Cleanse us from the stain and guilt of our sins, those we know and those of which we are unaware. In our thinking, our speaking, and our doing, we have exalted ourselves. We lack true humility. We deserve your wrath and punishment. For the sake of Jesus Christ, turn your eyes from our sin and cover our guilt. Open for us the gates of righteousness. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord God, we thank you that you have taught us what you would have us believe and do. Help us by your Holy Spirit for the sake of Jesus Christ to hold fast your word in hearts that you have cleansed that thereby we may be made strong in faith and perfect in holiness and be comforted in life and in death. And Lord, we lift up to you today those that we have on our health concern list. And Lord, we ask you to be with us here at St. Mark as we journey through Holy Week once again. May it be a meaningful week as we reflect upon what Christ has done for us again. May it touch our hearts, strengthen our faith, and we pray together as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>